Imagine your child needed to get medical help, but being told that you'll have to wait your turn. And that wait could sometimes be years long. That's what ha is happening to many parents of autistic children here in North Carolina, due to a law limiting who can treat their child. But efforts are underway to change that. Oh, Meet the Cabio family. Today, Mom Christy is finishing up her errands and just getting home. Well, <laughs> thank you. Cabio has her hands full, three kids, five and under, and lots to keep track of. Logan, Logan, wait, wait, let me And on top of that are her worries for her son, Logan. Logan wasn't making eye contact. He wasn't responding to his name. He wasn't able to communicate at all. Five-year-old Logan is autistic. All he liked to do during the day was sit in the chair and just rock. The Cabios are a military family. Dad is stationed at Pope Air Force Base. So the move to North Carolina was mandated, not a choice. I felt panic. I was very stressed. But Cabio says she knew she was coming into a state that had very limited services for her son. We needed to move here. My husband had orders. It was either we move with him or we separate for his four years that he was going to be stationed here. Logan had started his ABA therapy, as it's known, when he was two years old living in Florida. So we were put on wait lists with four different companies. Cabio says she knew that wait lists were really not an option. We were called that there was an opening at Effective Interventions and um, huge relief, big relief, a few tears were shed out of relief because I was so worried that Logan would lose the skills that and all the progress that we had made. <laughs> You're going. I'll get you toes. To now, Logan spends no. most of his week no. working on those skills at ABA therapy. Bounce, bounce. Like many five-year-olds, he bounce. likes playing oh, no. and has a ton of energy. Um, it looks like a lot of fun. <laughs> but unlike his peers, Logan can't express his excitement or his needs without some help. Swing, good asking. This is what his therapy with what is known as a behavioral analyst looks like. She works to make sure he responds to cues, can ask for what he needs, and can improve his social skills. It might be really basic stuff like looking to their name, um, turning to notice when someone walks in, following one or two step directions. Monique Baker works with kids like Logan from age 18 months to 21 years old. But under state law, she needs to have a licensed psychologist oversee her work. We are literally the only state out of 50 that has this set up the way that we do where we cannot practice independently and don't have a licensing board. For Baker, that means her practice is in jeopardy, as well as the 50 kids it serves. Oftentimes we have quite a few kids that are here his age. Because the psychologist overseeing her is retiring from the profession. It became a huge reality for me that I might have to close my doors. I'm a dad of two. Now, Cabio and Baker are both voices pushing for change in North Carolina. They are now advocating for changing state law surrounding behavioral analysts. This has led to few providers, long wait lists, high costs. House Majority Leader John Bell is helping to lead the charge for change this year. What's different? The beautiful thing about our state government is every two years people get to the ballot box and elect new people with new ideas and, and, and new opinions. He says the state needs to put politics aside and help families in need. This is one that we can't mess up, we gotta get it done. Touch. Families like the heirs in Moxville are watching this very closely. <gasps> you got it! Their son, Blake, is one of those kids who fell through the cracks for years. It's um, a helpless feeling. Um, my son regressed. Okay, now pull the other leg around. Blake is 17, nonverbal, yeah. and was without ABA services for three years when his family moved to North Carolina. My son will be 18 in May, so it's not like I have a young son that has years ahead of him. So we know that we're working with a very finite window to try to make changes so he can be more independent. He got off the wait list this year, but Ayers says the thought of other families dealing with this same delay 
is unbearable. Can you imagine like needing a medical service? Let's say you go to the doctor and, and they're like, well, you need to get this treatment. But you know what? There's a wait list. So can you just sit tight for three years and we'll eventually get to you. Happy birthday to you. But eliminating that wait list means overcoming obstacles. Generally, there, there have been concerns uh, about uh, one creating uh, new licensing boards. This bill allows behavioral analysts to practice independently and create a new licensing board. Typically, this type of legislation is met with skepticism. And sometimes the reason is questions about safety, sometimes the reason uh, is question about qualifications, sometimes the reason uh, are uh, questions about efficacy of, uh, of, of the service. Yes, I have heard from countless families across the state who are desperate to see this happen. Bell says that hesitation isn't there this year. And we sat down with the senators and said, okay, where's our sticking point? Why are we sticking? We brought stakeholders in and we actually had a, had a, had a a kumbaya moment when we said, okay, this is where we need to go and how we need to get there to open the doors to these kids. And in fact, initial support for change has already happened. The House showing its support for the idea. The House Bill 91, having passed its third reading, ordered sent to the Senate. Reduce reg to help children with autism. And the Senate, where this has previously been held up, doing the same. But now it comes down to working out the details. For families, like the Cambios, they say finding a final answer is necessary. I try not to think about losing services because um, it's a little overwhelming. I don't have any other options. I don't know what I would do.